Waiver wire madness has ensued. A lot of big names getting signed for a lot of fab, a lot of waiver priorities getting burned on a lot of running backs that have some question marks. We're going to talk about all of that. Break some news. Players coming off of IR very, very soon. Don't miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Wednesday. Here we are. Waivers have run in our leagues. They've run in your leagues as well. And uh, we were in some spirited debates before the show even began. Yes, we were. (laughs) We were talking uh, dynasty leagues and uh, just the nature of like every league has kind of a, I don't know, a personality. And, uh, you, you know, you have redraft leagues or sorry, keeper leagues where people sell picks. And we've done things in our league of record where we don't allow first round picks to get traded because teams were selling everything for those picks. And it was kind of like the only way you could win. So we made some tweaks. We spiced it up. <laughs> and then we have the dynasty league. And, the, you know, that's a very fun league. I, I enjoy it. You know, last year. Uh, there was drama around who was going to end up with Bijan and the number one pick. Drama around, yeah, Jason, you you got him. Uh, trade con- congrats him. on yeah. on. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah, trading for that pick, and then you know the rebuilding process in Dynasty is, you know, it's time. Time is built into a Dynasty league for sure. It's it you reap the rewards when you've built properly, and you you suffer long when you have made a mistake or you need to rebuild. Yeah, and that, I mean that's that is the format. That's the function. It's to trying to emulate the NFL, where you know you've got teams that are great for a long time because they've got a great quarterback, and other teams that are trying to find a way to rebuild. And it's a really really fun format. So we were debating this morning because there was like a suggestion of change. It's like no, this is already built for that. And um, I guess it's a good day for this because we had our dynasty pod come out this uh, this morning. Every Wednesday we have a dynasty pod. Um, to focus on those league formats. It was a mail special mailbag episode. A lot of talk about Jahan Dotson. So if you want to know what we're thinking about him for for dynasty leagues, check it out. Oh, and next week, <sighs> yeah. Rookie, Did you say rookie redraft redo? Tanking ethics was a part of it, Brooks. Yes, it was. Yep. Tanking ethics in a dynasty league. Interesting. Well, don't we don't we we covered it on the dynasty no, pod? I, <laughs> no, I, that's the tease. Oh, yes. interesting. Yes. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. Go listen. <laughs> uh, just for what it's worth, in our league, Zach Evans went for 78 fab. Sheesh. That's a <laughs> that's a lot of fab. I I had bid. I am the Kyron Williams manager, and mm-hmm. I had bid. Uh, I had plenty of fab. I could have could have definitely got me some Zach Evans. I, I bid $32. I'm like a weakling. I'm I know. I'm wondering uh, who, who got the winning... Yeah, uh, the winning bid Fab was bid. Uh, our friend Nick. Okay, seventy-eight. Uh I know that his team desperately needs a running back. He, do- he does. I wonder though, because if it's in the news today, but the this as of yesterday, when people were setting waivers and we were recording the show, and it's who do you go after? The news we had was Kyron Williams. It's minor. He's probably going to miss this week. Uh, this morning, that escalated to he's going to be out probably through the bye week, which turned Zach Evans into a much greater ad. So if you got him for cheap, congratulations. But I'm wondering if that fab bid, if the news was seen on on uh, Kyron this morning and then that ad, that fab escalated. My <clears> – <throat> and this is – we're talking redraft uh, of course. level of fab spins. I didn't go in on Zach Evans despite that news this morning because you you could end up with a good situation, sure. But you you could also end up with uh, DeMarcado, right? Like Connor went down just like Kyron went down and and you have an assortment of options. Like Miles Gaskin is has been uh, signed by that team. Daryl Henderson has been signed by that Practice team. Practice squad. Ronnie. For now. Um, 
Well, I think Royce was ele- Royce Freeman Royce was, was elevated. Royce was elevated. <clears throat> so like on the active roster, it's it's Evans and Royce. But they did they added those other guys onto the practice squad. Which when those started coming through yesterday, mm-hmm. that was the uh oh. That like, was the clue. That was uh, I think you lied to us that Kyron's only going to miss a week. People don't go out and add multiple running backs in a day to a practice squad when their starter is just going to miss a little bit of time. I saved Yellow. 50 fab and went with Craig Reynolds we'll s- for we'll a start this week. We will see. Because part of it is I don't we don't know if Jameer Gibbs is even going to be there. Sure. Like if Jameer Gibbs is not playing this weekend for the Lions, I'd rather start Craig Reynolds and Zach Evans if there was no Gibbs. Yeah, man. It's tough. The Okay. The the success of Ronnie Rivers and, and the fact that like Kyron's been having massive success. Yes, I liked him coming out of college, and you liked him too, but it's he didn't after the draft, it was he didn't profile as a guy who's going to be playing starter snaps and having tremendous success, which he has. But then Ronnie Rivers, a guy that most people before the start of the season had never heard of as well, he was having success. I'm so I'm I'm wondering, like, I think that Zach Evans, it or whoever it is, that's the bet. Who is it going to be? And if it is Evans, even though I didn't like him as a prospect, I think he's going to be just fine in that scheme. The The problem for me is is generally speaking, like Kyron can catch the football. And I'm not saying Zach can't, but we haven't seen it. Those were his first four carries in the NFL. So I'm all, I, I'm all for making the bet. You need a starter, you go yep. get him. Like Evans is at the top of that list. It was just up to how much you were willing to spend in your league versus other players. So. Yep. Um, it will be a fun situation to watch because that's a big bet. That's your season. Like if you spend 78 of your 100, this is your bet for the season. And we did get that news this morning that Kyron Williams is going to be out a little bit longer than people expected. It wasn't a guarantee that he's gone through the bye, but that would be the latest, they said. Uh, he, he should be back at the latest after the bye in week 10, which is, I mean, you're talking seven, eight, nine, three weeks of Zach Evans is mm-hmm. what you are uh, purchasing on the waiver wire. And, I mean, McVay has been a <clears> – <throat> all coaches are liars on this show until proven otherwise. McVay is among the nastiest, the elite of the liars. Like, that dude just – he'll lie to your face. Well, he, he he did lie to our face when he said he thought the ankle was fine. Well, so, but, no, but I'm saying, like, he, you could be a one-on-one conversation, not just, right. not just a coach up there trying to – You could be na- his mother. Navigate. Oh, yeah. And he will look oh. that mom in the face yeah. and say – He's playing. He's good. He's he good. is absolutely fine. I just watched him run a mile. I swear on my mom. <laughs> I, I am your I mom. I swear on you. <laughs> Has anybody ever said that? I swear on you. I swear on you, mother. <laughs> I swear on your life. Uh, reminder, drop it like it's hot. Check the waiver wire. It's a. It was a big Ooh, one today. A, it's a good reminder. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so a lot of players a lot of drops. were dropped. Yeah. And, I, I already messaged my co-manager and <laughs> said, drop it like it's hot. Oh, doggy. This is... This week was a mad scramble, um, and so there are going to be in every single league. I didn't want to. I didn't want to bring it up, but you said. Oh, it. I didn't want to bring it up either. I know, we're, but we're here for the people. But this is a week where every single league you are in, you have to go look who was dropped because mistakes be made. <laughs> uh, well, look, I uh, I was also laughing because Kyle, who is, is so reliable, I had already researched that it's Cindy McVeigh. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> That's uh, I swear on Cindy McVeigh yeah. is the new series. Is the well, new I mean, she raised a filthy, dirty liar. Yeah. Ooh, she's probably a liar herself. Probably. Mm. She's probably sweared on her this mom. Is, this is an unethical family. Very I, good at football <laughs> <laughs> play calling, though. Uh, follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. And you can find me at Andy Holloway. You can go to ballersdiscord.com if you want to join our Discord community. We're doing some trivia tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is always fun. Papa Josh takes good care of the Foot Clan over on the Discord. And congratulations. I need some sort of... um, There it is. Uh, Congratulations to Michael Yeager, who won the Christian McCaffrey signed jersey in our big giveaway. So, Michael, congratulations. That's a a nice one. Mm Mm-hmm. And... um, if you don't want it, I'll take it. Okay, Mike's always willing to accept. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, you can't get what if you don't ask. You're not. Mike's gonna get not it. eligible to win the giveaways, but you can just leave them to him. We that. accept gifts, so yeah. I mean, if you want to gift it to us, call it a Jaeger bomb. 
Uh, <laughs> that, hey, Jager it's bounce. a pretty nice jersey. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right. Every week we're looking at players we are hungry for more from. Maybe they have, uh, you know, you've seen some some nibbles, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. some signs of life, some flashes, and you want some more. So who's your hungry for more player this week? Mine is Jalen Waddle, who is coming on. We are about at the uh, NBA Jam rules here. Obviously, phenomenal player. That great would be offense. he's heating up. Uh, he is heating up right now. You had a slow start to the season before the last two weeks. Um, he was – you know, never inside the top 30 at the wide receiver position, uh, which was maybe a little bit surprising, but he got injured um, in week two, missed week three. And now the last two weeks is like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's really good. And now this matchup oh, against yeah, yeah. Philly, I am so excited for. I think he's going to That's catch Sunday night football, right? Fire Sunday night football, uh, 52 point over under the 28th ranked uh, Eagles as far as giving up fantasy points to wide receivers. I believe schedule adjusted their 29th. Um, so this is a this is everything you want. I, I expect more, and I'm famished for Jalen Waddle this week. All right. Uh, look, I, I'm i going with Michael Pittman. Ooh. Michael Pittman, Brooks, you can hit that. Go ahead and hit it. One sec. Oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't Come on, know Brooks. You know, what, you know what's I coming up. I teased it and everything. Yeah. Oh, Everybody. So listen, everybody's in the city now. Michael Pittman last week, 14 targets, nine for one Oh nine. And, and this segment is, it's not hungry for more with no chance for more. That's not the name of the segment. It's hungry for more with an opportunity. And I almost put Gardner Minshew in as the hungry for more because we got word this morning. Anthony Richardson is undergoing season ending surgery. Like Gardner Minshew is the starter for the Indianapolis Colts for the remainder of the year, unless he gets hurt. And, that's really, really good for Michael Pittman. Mike, yeah. I know he's uh, on your roster. He it's is. really, really good for Josh Downs. And it's really, really good for Jonathan Taylor slash Zach Moss in the passing game. So in a lot of ways, this is a Gardner Minshew. I'm hungry for more because the passing volume is going to be there. But Michael Pittman is going to be the biggest beneficiary of this situation because, as always, now that Mar- Minshew's there, he's going to be a target monster. That sometimes is going to equal a, a nice fantasy week, and sometimes you're going to be like, "Why don't you have more yards with your ten targets?" But his pace has been incredible um, with Gardner in the two games that he played with Gardner. I mean, so many targets, so many receptions. But if you look at the entire season, including the games without him, which have been uh, less voluminous, that you're talking about hundreds, voluminous, voluminous. <laughs> Uh, 170 targets. Voluptuous. Hunch very <laughs> voluptuous. 113 reception pace. Um I mean that's that is a PPR dream come true. Yeah. So so Michael Pittman hungry for more targets, more receptions, more consistency. And uh Gardner has thrown the ball forty four and fifty five times. Yeah. And Mike, yours is is the right just, answer. I was just gonna say Congratulations to Michael Pittman because he is in a contract year and he will be padding those statistics when he gets to go to the negotiation table and say, look what I have done for you. Hopefully he gets the bag. Uh, I'm going with the guy who was in my bold prediction to start the year and then we had week one happen and boy did I look the fool. Drake London, wide receiver of the Atlanta Falcons. Last week versus Washington, we got 12 targets, 9 for 125. Everyone remembers week one, 90% of the snaps, a target, no receptions. And it was, I mean, <laughs> that was that was a catastrophic open. The first week weighs so heavily upon us for fantasy football. Really an unfair amount, but it's it's hard not to have the human reaction when you're waiting months and months and months and then your first sample is absolute disaster for Drake London. But since week two, he's averaging over eight targets a game. He's the wide receiver 17 in that span. He is, He's the first read target. I, we're talking sensational numbers of just the play goes to Drake London. And on top of that, I mean, 
the talent of Drake London, in my opinion, was shown last year. I knew he was going to be a great player, but could the situation catch up to his talent and really allow him to thrive? And the situation for the Falcons has turned into they have to throw more. Like they are the recipe that they put on the field last year of we get we just run, we control the clock, we never have to throw because we're keeping the the game so close. But now they're having to throw. I mean, they're they are a very pass heavy team the past couple of weeks. And Desmond Ritter is looking a lot better than he did to start the season. So I am very hungry to see what Drake London could put up for the rest of the season. See if we can uh see if we can get some some touchdowns here and sneak them into that top twelve for my bold prediction. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, this is a go to receiver on a team with a up and down situation. That's with kind an of, ascending quarterback. <laughs> yeah, they lost. I mean they, they have to throw more and they, they didn't help them win the game. In fact they've lost three or four. But that's that's the thing is they they haven't been able to uh just sit on the ball. Like this is great news for the passing game. Yeah, I, I, I do wonder what the – like, from this point on, I wonder what Bijan will end up as in terms of a running back rank. Right. Like, from week seven on, is Bijan top ten? Um, I, I'm curious where he'll actually end up with this team because, it like, they're just not – yeah, 21 points, 7 points, 6 points, 16 points. That's the Falcons. That's the Falcons' total score. And so for Bijan, it's not just, you yeah, know. Yeah, the touchdowns haven't been coming, I believe. Through, and, 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 and Algier will take some. Through the first six weeks, minimum 70 carries, in the last 20 years, um, there has been, here's the list of running backs, who have averaged five yards per carry in the first six games and have yet to score a rushing touchdown. Bijan Robinson. That's it. He's the only one. So uh, he needs some rushing touchdowns. Let's uh, let's make that happen, Arthur. All right, that was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Uh, defense? No. Nope. Deodorant? Yep. Yeah. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, two things that we don't need to uh, rehash, uh, but Anthony Richardson, season-ending surgery. Kyron Williams expected expected to miss multiple games. It seems like a high ankle sprain. And uh, Royce, Spree Royce Freeman elevated off the practice squad. You know, if you're spending, uh, to, what was it in our league of record for? 72, I believe. 72 yeah. fab? Uh, 78. 78 fab. Probably worth a, a buck or two or a, a pickup of Royce Freeman yeah, just not knowing case. what the outcome is because when you're Zach Evans and you have four carries in the NFL, if you fumble, things could change quickly. It, it is a really good point. Uh, Royce Freeman, for example, we had a million waivers go through. This This was the, the largest waiver week of the season for our main league. Royce Freeman, still on waivers. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey, dealing with the oblique, the rib, uh, not considered to be dealing with a long-term injury, could be available for Monday night. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, let's – let's um, Yeah. <laughs> should be able to, like – It's about as bad as it gets. Yeah, that's that's rough. And then same situation for uh, Debo. Like, considered day-to-day, -day, not long-term, Monday night decision – Get healthy, Christian. Not for yes, this week. Yeah, Just, hell, yes, this this no, week. No, 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 no. Take this week off, put my him, man. Put Take him in this the week off. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be everything. Yeah. Well, there you go. Roshan Johnson still in the concussion protocol as of Wednesday. Oh wow. Bears expect to get Travis Homer back, who was higher on the depth chart than anybody that they've started. And Justin Fields will not practice, working with trainers, progressing well. Doubtful for the game. Yeah, it, it seems like some of the reports about him needing to be fully recovered, be able to have you know have full grip on the ball, all of that, which makes sense, made it seem like this is going to be a multi-week absence to me. And for what it's worth, Dalton Kincaid cleared concussion protocol. I, I've I've been thinking about that hapless at times uh, Bills defense, or I'm sorry, offense, yeah, offense yeah. the last two weeks, and like you had. 
no Dalton Kincaid on the field at all in week six against the Giants. You had a limited Dalton Kincaid with two targets the week before when he got hurt. So they, they it just screamed like they need somebody else. I mean, they're throwing the ball to Stephon Diggs as much as they are. Maybe that'll help Josh Allen out. Julio Jones! Hey. Oh, man. Back in football. Now, he, I guess he played last year, but it feels like 10 years ago. It does. When I was reminded that he... Uh, Titans? No. No? No, no, no. It was Tampa. Or, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Julio Jones back in hey. football to the Eagles, by the way. I didn't... I don't think I said that part. Uh, the Eagles, I think they were heavily influenced by uh, Mr. A.J. Brown, who had played with him in Tennessee, and said, hey, get him on this roster. He is 34.7 years old. Mike, you have a new home for your old man voice. What? Yeah. So, <laughs> so Julio Jones, I, who hasn't been dynasty? Oh, yeah. <laughs> seriously? We're going to flex. I mean. No, we're not going to flex that. That's just, it was just too funny. It is. It is funny. You know, last year, the reason we don't remember. So he, he started out week one, looked all right, got injured. Missed week two, missed week three, came back week four, got injured. Missed week five, missed week six, missed, missed week seven. Came back, got injured in week fifteen, got injured in week eighteen. He Sheesh. did he did what he always did his whole career, except he couldn't play through them. He's always like you know uh, every game getting injured, and then he just keeps playing. But uh, I think his body is, I don't know. I, his, he wasn't he picked up in the league point, of record. He had a twelve point uh, week last last year one time. Yeah, he he's not relevant. And then Deshaun Watson. Let me read the quote from Deshaun Watson regarding the shoulder injury. It could be any day. It could be tomorrow. Cool. could be Sunday. Mm. could be two weeks from now. I can't put a timeline on anything. <laughs> the, dude, you're uh, not helping yourself right now. Do you remember now, the, uh, the, the, the office, the, the, the little clip from the office where Jim is talking to Dwight, and he's like, could be next week. That's reasonable. Could be a month from now. I could see that. <laughs> it, it reminds me of that exactly. But like, This uh, is PR people. <laughs> This is not helping you. Do you... I think there's a word for this. He's out indefinitely. <laughs> we, we've learned this from Pete Carroll. We yeah, have, yes. We have yes. literally no idea. He's out indefinitely. But he's right. It could be tomorrow. Right. If it's indefinitely. Yeah. Is it uh, put any fear in your bones for Romari Cooper? Not Certainly. for... It, it does for me. So, uh, it, you know... It looked pretty it, good with Tucker. It nerfs him a little bit. I don't think his ceiling is the same, but with Tucker, uh, he, he was so much... Sorry, Walker. Wa Tuck Walker, <laughs> yeah. P.J. Tucker plays PJ basketball. P.J. <laughs> uh, Walker um, was serviceable and looked Amari Cooper's way, so it's like um, uh, he, he is okay to me as a fantasy asset going forward. How would he do with P.J. Tucker? The small four. Worse. The small four. Worse. Okay. Much yeah. worse. Much, I mean, much worse. He's he's old, right? PJ Tucker? Yeah. I mean Yeah. Like in terms like in the Adam Thielen years, is he old? He's thirty eight. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He's no, a, he's not. He's PJ Tucker is thirty eight years old. You can play like at thirty eight. Yeah. 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 Remember uh Haslam? How old is LeBron? Is LeBron thirty eight? He's he's getting there. Jason LeBron James is thirty eight years old. Mm. Thirty eight years young. Okay. All right. Well, this is a PJ Tucker, everyone. <laughs> All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with our Thursday night preview. <laughs> PJ Walker. Yes. Yep. PJ Walker. Big, big improvement over uh, D Dorian Thompson Robinson. Oh, yeah. As big as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what a situation there in Cleveland because they they just beat the 49ers. Yeah. And they have such a good defense. They have a lot of potential this year in that division. It's going to be a weird end of the year because of all the – it's a pain tolerance thing. It seems like it, right? You don't medically clear somebody if you think they can yeah. re-injure themselves. So, man, tough one. All right, let's get into it. Thursday Night Breakdown. All right. Jacksonville. Beef Eaters, 4-2. and two, Taking on the New Orleans Saints, who are sitting at 3-3. Three and three. 
The DraftKings Sportsbook line, New Orleans minus one at home over under is 39 and a half. Oh, what? Congratulations. All the Saints Ooh. games this year, all of them, all mm-hmm, six, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. have hit the under. And that's why Derek Carr is sitting at number two on my loser rankings of players I don't want to watch. Yeah, the the defense of the Saints is unfortunately very good. And the offense of the Saints is unfortunately very bad. That makes for a total low-scoring game in most affairs and not a bunch of fun football to watch. They are struggling against fantasy wide receivers. They are, like, if you adjusting for – on the year, they're 23rd against wide receivers and adjusted for schedule. They're 27th. So there is – there's some hope here for Chris Olave and the crew. Derek Carr had to throw the ball 50 times. You're talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the for Olave on the wide receiver side, Derek Carr just threw the ball 50 times against the, the Houston Texans, 350 yards, only one passing touchdown. But the fact that he threw that many times, that's, that's hopeful that the, the – Perhaps the shoulder problems are behind him. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the shoulder is going to have an effect at this point forward. Chris Olave, 14, 35, 21, injured, 33, 17. Uh, he has peaked at 15 fantasy points in week one. No boom games. We, I mean, this we is, get this man some Mike, touchdowns. I, I told you this last week when we were watching the game, and you once again mentioned that Olave is invisible. He is like invisible in the first half of games. It's like Michael Thomas gets the first half with like a Rashid Shahid touchdown. And then in the second half, Olave generally picks up his numbers. Now in the previous two weeks he didn't, but you know, he's a solid uh still an auto start for me. Mm-hmm. He is for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I also think he's a buy low candidate. I agree with that. I, I it's been hard to watch this offense. And and what what's troubling is when you have Olave or Michael Thomas or Shahid. Most plays, they're open. And most plays, Derek Carr will throw the ball to Alvin Kamara because Kamara has 25, 25, and 27 opportunities. The greatest tragedy of this game, to me, is that I don't get to just auto-put Alvin Kamara into my um, fantasy forecast DFS lineup this week because he is when he's on Sunday, I just play him. Full PPR is very, very nice for Alvin Kamara, um, and he has not been – overpriced but yeah being a Thursday night game he won't be on the slate so what are you doing with Jacksonville offensive pieces obviously Travis Etienne he's been too good he's in there's no matchup where you're gonna say I'm gonna sit him but outside of that Christian Kirk's been very solid Calvin Ridley has been hot and cold but this is not a great matchup in a low scoring game are these players that are just locked in your lineup or are you making decisions both of those guys are locked into my lineup which on, on the basis of a six. The wide bye. receivers? Yeah, Kirk and Ridley are both in my lineup because of the six bye weeks this week. That They're is, both locked in. That is fair. Yeah, I mean, it's you have Trevor Lawrence. We had a limited practice on Tuesday. Remember, he banged up the knee in this past weekend. He was considered- What does Sean McVay think about the knee situation? Oh, it's, it's, it's he's never seen a healthier knee. And Cindy McVay, what does she think? It's the healthiest knee of all time. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, but but that's Kyle, th- figure out the grandma's name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bury this family. <laughs> uh but Trevor Lawrence uh, Monday was considered a in the in the no practice, he was considered I I think he was a considered a no practice. Limited on Tuesday. It's it is tough. Like, are you playing I, I don't disagree with the wide receivers because of the bye weeks. It's a it's a tough situation. But are you looking at Trevor Lawrence against the Saints, who on the year are they're a pretty sturdy and stout defense uh, fantasy-wise? Are you playing Lawrence, or are you looking at a streaming option like Sam Howell? I'm looking at a streaming option. I, I want somebody with higher than maybe quarterback 13 ceiling this week. Yeah, I, I currently have. It, it's funny because default with six uh, players on – or six teams – on by you think well Trevor Lawrence is going to have to start it's not a great matchup he's got his own knee injury he's working through right now he's quarterback 14 for me on the week so that's outside of a that's outside of a starter um there's you know 13 guys I think that are better plays so yeah you you look you look elsewhere I agree um and and beyond like Hal I mean we've talked about obviously golf is going to be you're going to probably stay in the flames with golf in that offense. Yes, and yes. Even players like Russell Wilson against Green Bay would be in consideration. What about 
Cousins against San Francisco. Uh, Andy. Uh, <laughs> Brooks. Are they at home? Are, are, are they at home? What's uh, it's Monday night, right? Yeah. Prime, it, it, prime, the, prime time Cousins against 49ers, you say? Yeah, huh. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a good variable to discuss. I think I'll stay with uh, Trevor. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I uh, want to know what's going what's gonna to happen early in the week rather than wait. Susan McVay is the grandmother. Oh, good work, guys. We're going to keep keep this going. Uh, Cindy, Susan, <laughs> Sean. All right. Uh, by the way, Michael Thomas, I think uh, he's always in play as kind of like a basement level PPR guy. KJ Osborne against 49ers or Michael Thomas? I'll go KJ Osborne. Okay. I don't yeah. I don't think Michael Thomas has a ceiling. He's got a pretty good floor. Um, you know, he's not going to go out there and goose you. It's just it's 50 yards. That's what he'll give you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's exceptionally consistent. Here's his yardage over the course of the season. 61, 55, 50, 53, 65, 45. Like he's getting right around there. Right when he hits 50, they go, let's move to Olave. Yeah, right. They move to Olave to take the next burden. So, Anything else from this game you want to discuss? Uh, let's see. It Just worth noting, Jamal Williams' practice window was is open. I don't, he's not going to play this week, but it'll be interesting to see what the team does with Camara once Jamal is actually back. And I like both DSTs. I, I think you could play okay. Jacksonville against the Saints. I think you could play the Saints against Jacksonville. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Mailbag. Mailbag. If you have a question for the show, you can go over to thefantasyfootballers.com. You can click that submit a question button or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We're going to start with the voicemail today. Hey, guys. Thanks for the advice this year. Um, I have a question at tight end. Would you play Michael Mayers or Logan Thomas? Thank you. Tight end question, Michael Mayer against Chicago or Logan Thomas against the Giants? I'll go back to Logan Thomas. What do you guys think? I like Michael Mayer a lot this week. The But it's eh, – you don't want to get too reactionary and just you know snip, snap, snip, snap, back and forth. Logan Thomas has had two – Two really good games this year. One yep. uh, week two that was, but I mean it was two catches and he had a touchdown. And then the him against Chicago nine four seventy seven with a touchdown. That's which is part of why I like Michael Mayer this week. Of the the ascension looks like it is happening, and Chicago is such a good matchup for tight ends. Yeah, the well both both are plus matchups for tight ends. If if you look at the last five weeks, adjust for schedule, they're both um, uh, good plays. I would rather have Michael Mayer on my roster than Logan Thomas, who I think has the chance to ascend to a more of a must start weekly option. Uh, Logan Thomas is is a is we know he's a streaming option. He's he doesn't have the ability to I think ascend to where he's locked in. So if it's close and it, to me it is close between those two guys, I don't want to roster both. So I would rather start Michael Mayer and have him be on my roster. Yeah, Brooks was mentioning a lot of people bailing on Thomas after the down game. Still played the same allotment of snaps, just didn't end up with the targets and um, hit our waiver wire. I know that. Another voicemail question. Hey, man, my team is 1-5 and five right now. I'm just looking for some motivation. I already know who to start. It's just anybody off the waiver. So I think I appreciate it. <laughs> that man, oh, man, I'm 1-5. and five. That's a broken man. Keep fighting. We ha we ha hear this every single year, and I want a voicemail later when you make the playoffs to say, hey, man, <laughs> you told me keep fighting, and I did. I played guys off the waivers, and I made the playoffs. And then I want a voicemail when you just stink your way to a championship because it happens. You'll get there, and you'll be just so thoroughly dominated in the projections and then the other team, that monster team you're going up against week one of the playoffs, they just have a fart fest. And you win, and you win, and you win, and you have that bling. It's It, it happens every year. Just keep fighting to make the playoffs. Yeah, you're one of five, man. It's it's house money at this point. Just you have, You're like, there's nothing to lose at this point. Just keep going after it. All you, you, all you really need is a couple – a couple stinky wins, which 
Look, look back. Look back at the first six weeks. I promise there are some teams where you look at them, the score that they had, and they won, and you get angry about it because they don't deserve to win. Just go get some of those wins you didn't deserve. The biggest thing is if all the bad teams give up and you don't, you're at yep. the tippy top of the that list, which means you'll be on the fringe. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might you, you might make the playoffs. You can fight for it. You might not, but you'll be at the top of the bad teams because you kept fighting. Wins do get easier. That's something we don't talk about uh, enough, but through the middle – of the season and towards the fantasy playoffs, there are going to be easier wins because there are going to be teams that stop really trying. They quit too early. They're two and four. They're not going hard after waivers. Now they've got a crappier team. You end up going up against them, and they're easier to beat. Just if, if you keep scratching and clawing, you'll get more wins as the season goes on. Interesting question here. I don't know if it'll take you a second to think of one, but YouTube uh, question from Joe O'Sullivan. Who is one team that will improve over the course of the year, and one team that, Ooh. and one team that you think will regress? So, uh, you know, we've we've already seen some signs of life from the Cincinnati offense. So I I'm going to take them off the board for you. But teams that are really at the bottom, teams that are at the top, where you have a name? Hmm. I think like. Go ahead. As, as offensively, uh, just across the board, I think that the Seahawks are going to get better. The the fact that we you know we've only had one explosive game from Tyler Lockett. DK Metcalf is not performing the way that we know that he can, and the utilization of of Jackson Smith and Jigba has been baffling to say the least. But the numbers have like the the average depth of target has. It slowly creeped up for JSN. So just over the second half, I think that there is a chance that this team clicks and gets it going. The two teams that come to mind for me are the Saints, who will be playing. I, I don't necessarily think Their schedule think it's, is very good. I don't think it's uh, necessarily uh, going to be tomorrow night, but they have a lot of talent. Derek Carr has not been fun to watch, but he has been injured, and I think he's recovered from that. They have Olave. They have Michael Thomas. Kamara is back. This is an offense that should get better as the season goes on. And then the Steelers, because they've been putrid, and they've got Mike Tomlin. You know, I'm just always going to assume. But are they? Gonna... Is the fantasy output going to get better? No. Okay. <laughs> I think that's. But I think the fantasy I, output will get better for the. Saints. I've got. I've got a team that is going to be worse. Well, it's not the Patriots. <laughs> Go on. The Miami Dolphins. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fair. Because that's fair. of course, unsustainable levels of production. So when you look at sell high situations, I mean, even even this past week, I was looking at the chart for expected fantasy points versus actual production. Like Raheem Mostert scored like thirty two and a half fantasy points. His expected production this past week was like eighteen. Mm -hmm. And so they're generally at the tippy top of that list right now because you're you're out there breaking records with the most yardage that any team has ever done through six weeks and. You know, you're going to face the Eagles and you're going to face the, the, the Chiefs and you're going to face the Jets twice. And, you you know, there are some matchups on, on the docket that are going to be. So with all that happening, would you trade high on Raheem Mostert? That's of, right. Of having... course I would. But here's the problem with Mostert is he is not. If Raheem Mostert's numbers were attached to Bijan, you could trade high and get a haul. His numbers are attached to Raheem Mostert right. so nobody I've had no I have Mostert everywhere or at least I, I have him in a couple leagues where he's dominating and, and I have good records because of it I've not had one offer for him I'm not going to receive an offer for him uh the but would you use him to shop around try to I don't think I can get what I need from him so no I haven't I haven't shopped him around because I know no one's paying I have one more team that I think there is a clear pathway to having a much better I bet offense. I know who it is. Arizona. No. no. Oh, I thought you were going to oh, go with Kyler. That, that, Kyler's would make, return. that would make a lot of sense. By uh, the way, Kyler could be practicing this week. Yeah, we meant to bring this up on uh, – the, the. there were mm. reports locally Please here. Share. Reports locally here that they believe next week Kyler will have his 21-day window activated. Now, he that does not mean he's going to play that week. In fact, it means he's not going to play that week. But that's when everyone's going to go and pick him up. So if you want someone like Kyler, 
and you want to get them for free on waivers, now is the week. Next week you'll have to bid for him, but it will it's, still be several weeks. It's going to take some time. The, I mean, the, the guy's been recovering from an ACL, and it's a brand new offense. Like Kyler, to my knowledge, has not taken a snap in this offense. Correct. Maybe he's hitting the books real hard. Fingers crossed that's what he's doing, so he when Yeah, yeah make like, I'm sure that's why the fingers are crossed and I'm saying I hope that it has happened b because reports have been not the best on that front for Kyler Murray. Uh, you know, the homework like, clause put, put in, in the put, past, <laughs> in the past, in the past. Uh, but, but my point being, even when he gets activated, like how long does it take Kyler Murray? How many games does it take Kyler to get comfortable and going in this offense? The first game. I think the first wow. game he's active, that's, he's that's a confidence. I level think the first I game have. he is active, he will be good for fantasy football. Just because he will be, he's an upgrade over Dobbs, who has been decent for fantasy football. He's an upgrade over Dobbs for Hollywood. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the first week it'll it'll matter. But uh, again, he won't be active for several more weeks. The team I was going to bring up was the Baltimore Ravens because they've got a new system that hasn't That's seemed fair. to work well no right like their offense just looks they're one of the least fun offenses to watch for me uh between drops and what I think is b bad play design and disappointment for all of our Todd Monk and excitement coming into the year and the speed and pace of play and neutral pass rates that basically nothing has changed um I I I believe that they have enough talent um and a new system to really right the ship uh, that they would be someone I think to target. Yeah, it's wild. That that situation is so tough for me. The one of the reasons I didn't buy in at the beginning of the season is because we have such a prolonged example of Lamar's uh, ebbs and flows. You know, he's a we have consistency charts as part of the join the foot. You know, he's a C on there, even including this year, where forty one percent of the time he's he's reaching a a benchmark that you're happy, which is less than fifty percent, and so. Um, it's hard because we we saw it in the MVP year. We saw the consistency every week, and we all know like the capability of Lamar Jackson remains. Like I don't think we're ever going to have a year in his NFL career we don't believe he could flip a switch and say, seven eight games go off, and he's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to stay there in in permanent. So that one makes sense. I mean the whole division. I mean Cleveland gets a lot better on offense if Deshaun Watson's back and. Hey, he, could be, he could be back any minute, it, any minute, any month, I any minute, that. any month. It might be at noon. I can see right. that. Yeah. yeah. Right after lunch. Uh, back to back. Uh, we got two Nico Collins questions. Uh, Jonathan Kennan says Nico Collins or Chris Olave rest of season. Also, thank you, Andy. I drafted Tyreek at one Oh three and I'm five and one. Nice. Is that cause I had Tyreek at the tippy yeah, top? Or? You had him okay. very, very high. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm still absolutely, uh, Chris Olave uh, in this situation. Nico Collins has played a couple games here without Tank Dell, has a rookie uh, quarterback who's looked great, but, I mean, Chris Olave is a far more talented wide receiver than Nico Collins. That's not taking anything away from Nico Collins. It's just the truth. Yeah, I'll go. I'm going to take Olave. Yeah, that's the right call. But I think Nico's going to be very good. Like, that's yeah, not a sure. one's good, one's bad. That's right. just... Uh, and then T. Higgins, uh, would you trade him for Nico Collins in a full PPR? Sure. Instagram question. T. Higgins is so frustrating. Pretty bad year, year for the second wide receiver might take over from the first narratives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Waddle, not close. Slow start. Yeah. Mr. Don't... Devontae Smith, not close. And uh, T. Higgins. T. Higgins has been a – I mean, he has the, the one huge game, and I think there's enough – he has a, a long enough track record that I believe it will bounce back. The Bengals are already looking like they are shifting and bouncing back. He has a, the bye week this week to have another, you know, heal up period for his ribs. Then three of the four weeks: San Francisco, but, Buffalo, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Oh, I don't like to hear so that. So four, actually, four of five weeks are awful. It's not good matchups. He is probably my number one trade for target, though. I, I really he, he he was that before I saw that schedule. Yeah, to to me, um, T. Higgins and the Baltimore, or, or the 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 Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, you had Burrow, super injured, look awful. Um, you know, it was like the, he he has looked really bad this season, and 
that's not going to stay. When when he gets fully healthy, I believe that this offense will be good. But she had mm. another scramble play this weekend where you went, oh, yeah, the, the calf's all right. And now you got a bye week. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah well, no. here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm not know. saying go pay the sun, moon, and stars for T. Higgins because he's going to be great. What I'm saying is he's on bye, and he has absolutely been abysmal. He's, he's just But would you trade sucked. Nico Collins for him? That was the question. Yeah, I would. See, I would not do that. I'll take the number one for Stroud and that freewheeling offense, and uh, over, over the uh, like the T Higgins dance is is still a, we still lived in that world where it's up and down and all around, even sure. when he's been healthy. So that's my side, Mike. What well, split the difference? So Nico is on. He's also on bye this week. Then we got Carolina, Tampa Bay, the Bengals, Arizona, Jacksonville, Denver. That's a much better. That's schedule. a much better stretch schedule. Uh, although the and I love Stroud, but Stroud has not the the last couple of weeks. Stroud hasn't looked as good as he did to to start the season. So maybe the NFL is catching up on some things of of how they needed to defend him. I man, it's, I think it's I'm gonna, tough. I'm going to take. I think I'll take T, but that's very. I difficult. really wasn't sure which way you were. I go. I just, I'm, I say T, and I don't even know. Check with me later. You can get that deal done if you're the T manager and you want Nico. You can get that deal done. In eighty percent right. of leagues, probably true. Uh, fun question here from multiple people asking: Is Najee droppable? Oh no, no, he is not oh. droppable. But it is fun. Breaking news: Speak of the devil. Uh, unbelievable timing. Uh, Cardinals have designated Kyler Murray to return. Well, there you go. The rumors were true. Probably won't play this week, but I uh, almost certainly won't play this week. But could be next week. And I, I had read some stuff around the valley here that um, next week was a target. To to play to play oh wow not this week but next week I yeah I I will that that's interesting I I haven't heard that my expectation has previously been that when they open his window up they're going to give him all three weeks to practice this also ends any speculation from the 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 tank for Caleb yeah well the, the Cardinals are going to move on and they're not going to bring him back this year and we've said like from the beginning like that's not happening Kyler's playing this year people just want to make things happen sometimes that have not been like there's no sign of any kind from this organization inside ever this offseason that they don't believe in Kyler Murray well yeah I, I haven't seen anything either and uh, so, it's, uh, but the and they risk just so people understand, you risk everything if you wanted to move on from Kyler Murray by allowing him to play football because his contract is guaranteed for injury, and if you put him back out on the field and you wanted to move on from him, those are non congruent logical steps to take. So, you know, Kyler, I've seen a lot of people stashing him. You you start looking at Hollywood Brown as a buy candidate. Because he's the go-to right. guy, best friends with Kyler. Something to pay attention to. Jason's Maybe. perking up in his Maybe. dynasty league. Uh, that that it's definitely exciting. Uh, but I'm I'm over here giggling, going back to the question about Najee Harris. Oh yeah, <laughs> because I'm sitting here thinking what I thought is like you can't you can't drop Najee and you can't you really can't. He is he is receiving too many opportunities at a running back position. Like that's that's enough. You, if he was on waivers, you'd pick him Would up. Would you rather have him or Zach Evans? And <laughs> <laughs> you silly goose. <laughs> uh, what's funny is I was gonna say like you can't. I can't get myself to drop Tyler Algier. And Tyler Algier's been, you know, he's getting opportunities. He's not good after that week one where he got the multi touchdowns. He's averaging four point three fantasy points per game. But like including that week one and including all the games with Najee. <laughs> he's outscoring Najee this year. Tyler Algier has had a better season than Najee, who has just been putrid. Here's his fantasy points. Here's his here's Najee's fantasy points per game. I don't know if you guys realize how bad I'm it's looking been. at it. Four point three week one. San Francisco. Four point eight week two. Cleveland, Cleveland. Great defense again. Okay, the Raiders. That's a team you can run on. Six and a half fantasy points on 20 opportunities. He got the ball. Then against Houston, his best game of the season, 10 fantasy points. And last week against Baltimore, 4.5 fantasy points. Uh, gross. 
When wow. you when you give him the football, because I wanted to look this up, it's it's not a stat we refer to a lot, but it is one I refer to right now in my Najee bashing victory lap. When you give him the football, you get point four nine fantasy points. That's what you receive, and if you look at every opportunity that he's had this year, point four nine fantasy points. Nice. So, um, the great news for sorry, Naj- that's every every rushing attempt. The the great news for Najee this you get one point seven three with Mostert is his. I mean, his ranking will be much higher this week because, because of the bye. Because six yeah. <laughs> there's six teams on bye, so there's he will be dropped. Up to, yeah, check your league because Jason's right. You should put him on there because he's guaranteed opportunities. People are fighting over Zach Evans and Craig Reynolds and Keontae Ingram's getting fab spent on him and Demarcado was last week and. Uh, so, so to pay attention, and you know, we we did see last season him start really putridly awful, and then the second half of the season, I think he was like the running back four. See, like a baby Yeti. Problem I is, mean, is he, that Warren is gets, leveled up. Yeah, over the last few weeks too. Yeah, no, I, I, the, the, uh, the sun is not shining brightly on <laughs> Najee's future, but um, shouldn't be dropped. There is, there is still the world where he becomes fantasy relevant again with the opportunities he's getting if they figure things out as an offense as a whole um oh but that's it, not happening say so he mm. has he has no touchdowns on the season so mm. far through five weeks yeah i've watched enough games. i've watched enough kenny pickett to know like why that is <laughs> yeah i mean if you're gonna we're do- all trying to figure out the guy who did this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> who was it just it could be any we'll, of us we'll all close our eyes <laughs> Just get out of here. <laughs> that, I mean, if we're going to sit here and like talk about the Jets players not having certain ceilings because of Zach Wilson, we need to have the picket conversation. Yeah. Yep. Deontay Johnson's coming back. How excited are you? Uh, it, look, I mean, that is helpful for the yeah, Steelers offense. I mean, but Deontay Johnson. What's did. amazing is, uh, do, you, do you know off the top of your head, do you know the record of the Steelers? I'm going to guess we are six weeks in, they're, but they didn't play six. They had a bye. Five, five yeah, games. What's the record? Are, they're not three and two, are they? Yes, they are. Oh my goodness, Tomlin, you've done it again. <laughs> yes, they are. You magician. <laughs> I mean, I knew it's like that. What that's... if we found out Tomlin just had a guy that changed the standings? <laughs> <laughs> he had like a little hacker guy. Wow. And ev- everybody looks up every week and goes, "What? They're nine and eight? They're nine Man, and Tomlin, that's, that's you not are how I remember it at all. <laughs> you are a wizard. I mean, that division. The Bengals are at the bottom at three and three. Wow. And they are. They're two. The, the Steelers are two and zero oh in the division. They're right probably going to make the playoffs. They <laughs> always do. And their schedule coming out: the the Rams, Jacksonville, oh, Titans, Packers. Like th- those are those are winnable games. I have especially heard, for Tomlin. I heard so much Kenny Pickett hype from the Steeler fans that were like all over Twitter. I've heard none hey, of that, and here pre- they are at three preseason and two. Looked looked good. Hey, he owns the preseason. Yeah. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. Head over to jointhefoot.com, become a part of our fantasy football community. And a lot of you over there getting ready for the week. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Starts of the week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.